Hello, I'm here to tell you how I made over a million dollars flipping laptops and how you can easily do it too. First off, I'm going to tell you about how we get laptops and get really good deals on them. And then I'm going to talk to you about getting laptops ready and making them sellable. And last, I'm going to talk to you about selling laptops. So first off, let me share my desktop with you. And the number one way I get laptops is by simply building a website that says, I buy laptops. I called this one Arizona Computer Recycling. I just you know, bought the domain one day, spent a little bit of time and effort building a little bit of a website, uh, made a couple little YouTube videos that go on the website, made some cool graphics. It's actually not even that great of a website. I'm, I'm probably gonna be redoing it here. Um, before doing this, I was already in business as a computer store, uh, flipping desktops uh, and, and, you know, getting computers ready for businesses and all that, and also fixing computers. So I did have a brick and mortar location. Uh, during the Great Recession, you know, I brought, you know, what do they call it, 2008, 2009, I ended up losing the computer store, uh, mostly because I took on a partner and he rented it into the ground. Uh, after that, I needed to start over. So where did I start? I started by taking one of the rooms in my house and buying a few laptops and flipping them. I started with just a handful. Um, every day my goal was to buy one or two laptops and then sell one or two laptops every day. So let me go through real quick. I built this website and what's the beauty of the website, it's a couple different levels. First off, people call you up because they simply want to just recycle their computers. A lot of businesses and a lot of people just want to do the right thing. They want to be green. So they will call you up and say, hey, you know, we just upgraded. We got a dozen laptops right here. Do you want to come by and get them? And guess what? Of course I say yes. I drive over there and I get a dozen laptops. Most of the time for free. These people, they don't care about money. Every now and then they call me up and say, hey, you know, we like a little bit of money. What can you offer? So I drive over there. I look at their laptops. I give them some ridiculous lowball number. Usually, you know, if, if, it's a, if I know I can sell the laptops for $300 each and there's 10 of them, I might give them $400 for the whole lot. And almost always, that the next thing comes into effect that there's no competition. The best part, when you have a website like this, generating your source of laptops is you don't have any competitors. There's nobody out there trying to bid more than what you are willing to give. They're just, you know, you're the only game in town. They call you, whatever you tell them, that's the price. They say yes. I think I haven't even had twice ever where they said no to my price. They would just, whatever I tell them, that's pretty much it. They take it and they move on. So having a local recycling website that you do a little bit of work on, a little bit of SEO on, and you make the people come to your website, that's the number one way to get laptops. The number two way, which I buy a lot of laptops from, is I just go on offer up. You get people who are desperate that they need to sell um, you know, they want to sell their laptop, they want to get some money for it right now, and you get people all the time that are like, you know, hey, I need to sell my MacBook, I need to sell my, my uh, PC. You get a lot of people on here that are, you know, other flippers also that are trying to sell at ridiculously high prices. Uh, you also get quite a few uh, businesses on here, so you call them up and they're like, you know, yeah, we have 20 of these laptops. How many do you want? And I, I'll say, you know what, well, I'll take all of them if you give me a really good price. So that's what happens. I take all of them at a really good price. And next, so on Facebook Marketplace, you can also find laptops just like OfferUp. So OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, and also having your own website. Now, to tell you the truth, it does work a lot better if you live in a large city. I live in a city called Phoenix. It's a city of about four and a half million people here in the Southwest United States. 
if you live in some podunk town that has 50,000 people in it, there's not going to be enough volume for you to make a million dollars. Um, I, I, there's, there's just simply not enough laptops. There's not enough people selling. There's not enough sources for laptops. You're going to have to go and buy laptops at a much higher price from somebody like me or somebody else who lives in a much larger city who's being a recycler. That's just the straight up truth. Um, this is not a game that you can play if you live in a small town. Uh, I, I don't think I would be able to make the money I made if I lived in a town of less than a million people. There's, there's just no way. Now, because I had the Arizona Computer Recycling website, I also was able to do something really, really awesome. And I had a company from Texas reach out to me and they called me up and said, you know, they were in the laptop game. They bought a whole bunch of laptops. They uh, didn't really figure out how to sell them. They couldn't really figure out how to um, get them all working perfectly because there were some defects in the laptops. And they just simply didn't have the ability and the talent to reload those computers and get them ready for sale. And because of that, they, were, they sold this giant pile of laptops to me for literally pennies on the dollar. Um, they needed, I, I had the space, I was the only company, I mean, they told me they called 40, 50, 60 companies all over the United States trying to get them to buy, the, buy these computers. I was the first one that even said, said yes, like I'll take a chance on something. I, I took a small sample. Uh, we enjoyed doing business together. I was able to get them to give me all the computers on consignment simply because I already had a place to put them. It was almost two semi-truck loads worth, which is a lot of computers. Um, I got all the computers. A few months after I took them on consignment, they offered to let me just buy them out for a ridiculously low price. And because of that purchase, I went on and you know hired somebody who his job was to get 10, maybe 20 laptops every single day, uh, gone through the, the glitches, fixed the drivers that were causing the keyboard issue that these laptops had, uh, make sure that all the laptops fully functioned. There were a handful of laptops that had a screen frickling issue. There were laptops that had other issues. But at the end of the day, we were able to sell these laptops and make bank. Now, let me go through and show you next, real quick, before we go on to selling laptops, that's going to be the stage three. Let me just go real quick on how we get laptops ready to go. We, first off, download Windows 10. You can get Windows 10 and also 11 straight from the Microsoft website. All you have to do is type into any search engine, um, Microsoft Media Creation Tool. When you get the Microsoft Media creation tool, you can go straight to Microsoft's website and download an ISO file right here. You just click download now, it downloads it, you save it on a thumb drive, and now that you have a thumb drive, you can pop that into any, any laptop that came with Windows originally. If it came with Windows, built into the BIOS on the motherboard is the product key. It's already there. You know, Dell paid for that product key. HP paid for that product key. It's already on there and you can legally load Windows on there. It will activate, it will work great. And at that point, you can get it ready to sell to a customer. In addition to just loading Windows, we also go and we run this program called Ninite. Um, this lets you pick some programs. Hey, I want to put Chrome on somebody's computer. I'm going to put Zoom on their computer. You know, I'm going to might want to put Blender on their computer. Um, you know, I'll always put Google Earth. I might want to put Steam. I like 7-Zip. You can go through and click as many of these as you want, and you'll get a little download that you can save on your computer. I save it on the thumb drive that I'm using to load, load it. So, you know, I put it right onto the thumb drive. Um, I'll put the Ninite program and boom, you install Windows, you install Ninite, it might use up about, you know, uses up a good, good amount of your internet, probably a few gigs of internet. Um, after you install Ninite, you make sure you update all the updates in Windows, and most of the time that'll give you most of the drivers that you need. Um, then I go, and let me bring it up here real quick, we have Device Manager, 
and let me bring it to the correct monitor. And device manager shows you all of your devices. If, a de if there's a driver not installed, it's gonna have a big yellow explanation point next to it. And all you gotta do is right click on that and say update driver. And most of the time, it'll find it and get it from Windows. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to go to the manufacturer's website. You're gonna go to HP's website, Dell's website, type in the model of that laptop and download the drivers for that laptop straight from the manufacturer. That's the best way. Um, if I'm buying a laptop right now, I will never pay a penny for a laptop that doesn't at least have a Windows 10 sticker on it. If it has a Windows 8 sticker on it, I'll probably still get it, I just won't buy it. I'll take it for free, and when I tell people that, you, you know, you would think that people say, oh no, I need money for this. No, 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 90, 98% of the time, these people are, oh yeah, okay, well, I understand there's no value. Here you go, it's free. Free, 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 free. And that's what you want. You want free laptops. And those ones, you can still put Windows 10 on it. Any Windows 8 computer still works totally fine with Windows 10, and you never really have driver issues. Windows 7 computers, sometimes you might be hunting drivers. Um, there's a couple different drivers. I use Driver Pack Solutions. It's a You could download it, put it on a thumb drive. If you want to put the entire suite on a thumb drive so you don't need to go on the internet, it's about 30 gigs. You just put, you know, have your, I, get, I use a 128 gig thumb drive. I also use a program called Ventoy which lets me have different ISO versions. So I have Windows 7 ISO, Windows 10 ISO, Windows 11 ISO. Uh, I also have Ubuntu and a couple flavors of Linux on there. And I can put all of my tools. I put my Nine Night folder, I put my driver pack solutions. I do have a folder of tech tools available on my website that tells you what tools I use. There are also other tools if you want to you know, fix computers. Uh, there are tools out, out there to even get past BIOS passwords. Um, one of the things I learned early on is I don't pay for a computer unless I reboot the computer because I simply want to make sure there's no BIOS password on that computer. Uh, you would have a major hard time if you have a BIOS password. I also go through a quick little checklist when I'm pricing out the computer. Does it have sound? Does the sound work? Is there any issue with the screen? Um, you know, are there any defects in, the, in, in, in it? And you, you know, look at the computer, study the computer, you're meeting with the person, every little defect, guess what? Oh, that little ding right there, we'll take $50 off. You know, oh, we'll take $20 off. Take, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, we had a laptop that we prearranged to buy at $250, and I'm buying it, walking away for $150, because defect after defect after defect. The next thing I do on laptops, is I will not sell a laptop that does not have an SSD in it. And you heard me right. If it has a hard drive and that's the only drive that that laptop can hold, that hard drive is being removed and putting an SSD in there. If it has places for two drives, I'm going to put an SSD for the operating system and run the hard drive. I'll just wipe it out and make that hard drive a secondary drive that we can use. Um, I will not sell any laptops that don't, well, any laptops to an end user like this that does not have an SSD in it. So that's getting laptops ready. Now we're going to talk about selling laptops. So where do we go to sell laptops? Well, my number one place I sell and where I have sold over half of all the laptops that I have sold to make over a million dollars profit is a website called Amazon. This is, um, unfortunately, we can only go back two years. So in the last two years, as of today, um, I have sold $657,000 worth of laptops. And there's a maybe $20,000 of non-laptop things on there. Occasionally I'll sell a network switch or a video card or something, but it's almost all laptops. This is 1,668 separate orders with an average sales price of $415. Unfortunately, I can only go back two years, but if you went back, you could go back year after year after year. I've been selling online for over 10 years like this. Next, I also have a brick and mortar store. I actually have two computer stores right here. They're called Emerald Computers. And I do say, I have made over a million dollars on selling laptops, and I've sold over $2 million worth of laptops in about 
a seven year period. Most of that has been in the last three years. I, not, I did not make it all in one year. But during that same time, I have sold another million plus dollars worth of cryptocurrency mining machines and over a million dollars plus of desktop machines doing the exact same flip, fix and flip here. I'm just mentioning laptops because laptops are smaller and easier for most people. And I've also done about a half million dollars in service and repair over those years. The service and repair money that comes into our business is enough to pay the rent and to pay for all of our employees. The profit we make on the desktops and the laptops is simply gravy. Um, unfortunately, I did the, um, you know, to be honest, I did the Ethereum mining rigs a little bit messed up and I ended up hardly making any profit. I did make a small profit, but it definitely wasn't worth my time. <laughs> so this is the number one way that I sell computers. I do keep a spreadsheet, current inventory, updated every single day of all the computers that are done. So people can go there right now and then these, all of these computers are done as of right now and ready to pick up. And if you scroll over to the side, there's a little mathematical calculation. It says right here, I have $178,000 worth of laptops and desktops that are ready to go, that are ready for somebody to pick up. Um, this goes through and tells you exactly what I have and the specs of every single computer. Now this includes desktops. I would say 60, 70,000 of that is desktops, but that's where we go. Here's the business report going uh, also back for the two years on Amazon. We also sell on eBay. We sell in our store. We sell on Facebook Marketplace, but one of the best ways we sell is we have an email list that we email out and we say, hey, we got you know this bundle of laptops in. Um, the other day, we just picked up 200 really low-end laptops, 8th Gen i3 laptops uh, from a school, and those laptops were, you know, pretty, pretty basic. Most of them had 128 gig SSDs, 8 gigs of RAM. We quickly got them ready to go. We got them for free. Free. Um, we decided to sell them online for 95 bucks. But we're talking, you know, with 150 of them, that's still, after we get, you know, after I pay some bills, that's still twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 profit. And that's how you make money in this business. Now, how did I get started? I got started simply by taking a couple hundred dollars and buying a couple laptops. Uh, I went through, bought a handful of laptops. I went and bought a few more, sold, fixed those up, sold those, bought a few more, just kept recirculating the money. Um, pretty soon I had maybe three or four computers coming in every single day and three or four, you know, maybe three computers going out every single day. On average, I buy laptops by going on eBay and seeing what completed listings are about. Let me bring you up what that looks like. So if we go to eBay, let me, um, so we can search for gaming computer. Gaming laptop game. <laughs> it knows me. So we search for gaming laptop. Well, we're going to not know too much about this. So we're going to say, let's say Asus ROG. So we can get a little bit laptop game. We're going to go down and get it a little bit more focused on here. Now, obviously this one's not gonna be 10 bucks. We don't wanna see what people are offering to sell them for. That's never gonna get you an item. What we wanna do is click right here where it says sold items. And we know this laptop sells for $750. So if it's a gaming laptop, pretty new, I know that I could probably sell this laptop fairly easy and fairly quickly for $750 if I sold it on eBay. Of course, eBay takes a little bit of fees, but if I sell it locally, because somebody's willing to pay a little bit more to be able to see it in person, I might be able to sell it for $850. In fact, this white laptop, I actually had one of these not too long ago, and I sold it for $950. I bought it for $600. So, made a $350 profit on this laptop right there.
Um, it's really, really cool. You can see, you can't really see it in the pictures, but these holes have little holograms behind it and a very awesome rainbow effect. Um, but I go on here, my general rule is I try to buy newer laptops for 50 to 60% of this green price right here on eBay. If I'm buying a laptop more than about two years old, my goal is 40%, and if it's more than three or four years old, I pay about 30% of the price here on eBay. And when it's that old, people don't care. They just give it to you. And you buy that, you pay cash, you get the best deal in cash, you meet in person, you do it at a safe location. I don't meet outside at gas stations, I don't meet at, at my house, I don't tell anybody where I live. Um, I might meet them at my store, because I do have a retail store, which eventually if you're doing this big enough, you need to hire employees, you need to have a place to store all this, a place to have your tools. M my general idea is if you have more than about ten or fifteen thousand dollars coming in every month, it's worth it to go and rent a small little retail store. It's it, you'll make the money back many times older over and do what I do. You just hire somebody, they sit in the store all day and they're able to just do random repair work that comes in the door. The repair work pays their salary. The repair work pays your rent and you're still making all the profit off laptops. You're still free to go and buy and sell laptops. I don't sit in my stores because that's gonna restrict me from going around and willing and dealing and making deals. I'm in my stores maybe 10 hours a week total. Um, so that's what I like to do. And it works out really well for me. So, of course, you also get to the point where sometimes you buy laptops that are defective. And those are even better because I can pick those up for 20 cents on the dollar. Sometimes 10 cents on the dollar. Sometimes free. And if they're defective, hey, they drop the screen. Well, you go on Amazon, you buy a screen for 50 bucks, you pop it in and boom, it's done. Oh, the battery doesn't work. We go on Amazon, most batteries are $20, $25. Boom, you need a charger. Well, I go and buy chargers in bulk. If you want to buy chargers from me, you can just call me up, I will sell you chargers. Go to emeraldcomputers.com, get all of our information. Um, I do not use universal chargers at all. If, if it's a Dell blue tip charger, I will get Dell blue tip chargers, which is the 4.5 millimeter charger that's this long. Um, you cannot use a charger that's a lower wattage than what your laptop requires. If your laptop needs 90 watts, you cannot put a 65 watt charger on that laptop. It will, it will work maybe a day. And then a month, a couple days down the line, that motherboard is gonna be starving for power and it's gonna blow a circuit. It's gonna blow a capacitor because you didn't give it enough power. So you gotta make sure, under so many little things, but I'm, I'm giving you the secrets, I'm opening the doors to the store, I just wanna share what I learned. Um, hopefully, I, get, I don't get a lot of competitors in the Phoenix market doing this, but if you're anywhere else in the world, go for it. I want you to go and make as much money as you can. You know, you're in Miami, you're in Atlanta, you're in New York, it, this works everywhere. You just go around, you buy this, and you, you sell it. You know, you make it easy for people to buy it. Now, back to the personal security issue. I'm rambling a little bit, sorry. Um, but I'm sharing some good meat, I hope. Um, back to the personal security. I, it is legal in Arizona for me to carry a firearm. I do so. I carry a firearm when I meet people. I only meet in public indoor locations. I do not meet people outside of a building. I'm not gonna meet you in a parking lot. I'm not gonna meet you at the back of my vehicle. We're gonna go inside that McDonald's. We're gonna go inside that Burger King and we're gonna meet and do business where I have a little bit of light and a little bit of security. Because you know I've heard horror stories of people meet out by a car and then all of a sudden the guy, as soon as you, you show the cash, some guy comes up and gets all your cash. And I'm not I'm doing that. I meet inside of a place where there's witnesses. Um, if you want to go really extreme, you can actually meet at most police stations. Uh, a lot of police stations, at least here in Arizona, they actually have a specific area for trading and buying and selling, and they have a web ca a camera, multiple cameras there, so that you know that any deal is going to be up and up. No one's going to get violent on you when they're in front of a police station on multiple cameras. That ain't going to happen. So 
I feel really secure doing that. <clears throat> Once you have a store, you can have people come to your store. I will tell you right now, from this website right here, the Arizona Computer Recycling website, I get, on average, 30 to 50 computers per week dropped off in our lobby for free, completely free. And I take those and they're great. Now, not every computer that you're gonna get is gonna be worth a lot of money. We get some computers that are ancient. They're worthless. We get them for free, so we're not really worried about that. We have people that we can sell them to. We take anything older than about 10 years, but not any antiques. We keep the antiques separate, sell them as collectibles on eBay. Uh, we can take the older stuff that's probably anything I would say right now, first gen i-series and older, and nobody wants them. Not even third world countries, they don't want them. So we take those, uh, we wait till we have a thousand pounds or so, maybe 2,000 pounds. I drive down to a metal recycler that knows how to recycle and process electronics, and they write me a check for well over a thousand bucks. I do this about once a month. Pretty nice, extra thousand bucks, pretty much every month. Then we take the computers that we <clears throat> are able to easily fix, we fix them up, and we go through the process, fix them up, list them, get them ready for sale. Uh, we do have a little form that we put on every single computer that lists exactly what's, on the, what's in the computer and the price that we'd like to sell the computer for. We also put the name of the person that got the computer ready and the date it got ready. So we know, hey, that this computer's been here for six months, it's probably overpriced. So we lower the price. So you take the, take the worst ones, you scrap them. You take the best ones, and you can easily get those refurbished. You take the ones that are you know, not good enough to be refurbished, but are still worth something, and we put those in a giant pile and make those spare parts. And quite often we get spare parts. But the number one thing that we do with those is we get people to come in all the time. A guy came in today, um, he, he was from Mexico proper, actual Mexico, and he comes up to America a couple times a year. He came into our store, and told us he wants, uh, you know, a couple boxes of laptops, and he has a thousand bucks cash. So we went through. We ended up getting him some little bit nicer laptops than he was expecting. He gave us a thousand bucks for nineteen laptops, and we gave him a, a little box of, a, you know, a handful of chargers. So that's something that can easily be done. None of these laptops were ones that we were considering. Uh, putting on our shelf. They were all a little bit too low end for that. So he basically got them for 50 bucks, a little bit right, right around 50 bucks a laptop on average. And I know for a fact where he's going in Mexico, he's going to get $200 a pop. He's going to make three grand profit. And that's going to be awesome for him. More power to him. I want people to make profit. And if you want to buy a starter pack of laptops from me, contact me. I'll give you you know, I can put 20 laptops in a box and ship it over to you. I want to make sure I put excellent value in there, something that you could easily, easily triple your money. Um, I can sell you the SSD drives, or you can just buy the SSDs off Amazon. As I said before, I wouldn't sell a laptop that doesn't have an SSD in it, and these ones are not going to come with SSDs. They're too old for that. But you could take a laptop, put an SSD, put Windows on it, you know, put some drivers in there, scrub and clean the dirt, you know, if there's any, wipe down the screen with some rubbing alcohol, you know, clean, you know, sterilize and clean. Um, I have a little blower tool that it's a little like electric blower and it blows out the dust in the fans. And these computers are just like new. You go ahead and sell them. I'm just sharing some wisdom here for y'all. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe. I'm gonna make a lot more videos about computers, a lot more videos about technology and how to make money and entrepreneurship. I already have about 190 videos on this channel. I will say about 50 of them are not about that subject. They're like more personal videos. Um, but over 100 of them are really good videos. Go back and look at them. If you like, let me know. As I said, like and subscribe. 